The Breeders' Cup is coming to Lexington this weekend, November 4th and 5th at Keeneland Racecourse. There for just, I believe, the third time. Uh, an outstanding event, the World Championships of Horse Racing over the next over two days, Friday and Saturday, 14 races, and you can wager on them all with our friends at Naira Bets. I'm Nick Roush, here to tell you that you can enjoy a free $25 bet and a $200 deposit match simply by using the code KSR25 when you sign up for Naira Bets. Uh, they're going to have bonuses all weekend long for returning players. Just go over to NairaBets.com and check out their pr promo calendar. Folks, I'm not a professional, but I can help you have a lot of fun this weekend because there is more money made in horse racing this weekend than any other weekend in the sport. It's because the teams are all good. Not the teams, the, the horses, but that's what it's like. You're like, it's like at the NCAA tournament. Anything can happen. The same thing can happen. Breeders' Cup weekend because there's so much talent. The best of the best horses in the world will be in Lexington, and I'm going to help you try to win a little bit. I've got some picks later on, but first, a few tips. Tip number one, it's better to be lucky than good. Yeah, like I, you can listen to as many podcast videos, people telling you how things are going to go down, but like sometimes dumb luck, it will just get you a long way. Um, if you have a, a kid named Tyler in the first way, race, uh, first Breeders' Cup race, Tower's Tribe opens at 15-1. to 1. I would not be shocked if that Tower horse won just uh, on a whim, right? Betting names, betting numbers. My wife likes the bet, the number two. You will get some crazy prices here, especially with all the European horses running the turf races. I have a hard time handicapping those turf races. I'm not going to give you any turf picks today because it's hard to do without the speed fix. Dumb luck can really help there, especially when there's – 15 horse fields and you've got six horses all at the final pole vying for the finish so don't be afraid to roll the dice get a little lucky it's like the person in the ncaa tournament that bets the, the kid that picks the mascots and gets their final elite eight games right they get all the upsets right sometimes it's better to be lucky and good tip number two find the right connections when in doubt you bet familiarity right at keeneland a lot of folks love to play wesley ward uh, especially his first-time starters. You're not going to get any of these this weekend. But Wesley Ward on the turf is a beast. Um, he was a beast previously at the Ascot. That's not my connection, though. I am a Brad Cox guy. He's a South Louisville guy. A couple of years ago, the last time this was at uh, Keeneland during the COVID year, he had either four or five Breeders' Cup outright winners um, over the 14 races. He was incredible. The one, that, the one that's really helped out the last – Keeneland Fall Meet, which Brad Cox was the winner of. Graham Motion on the turf. Graham Motion on the turf. Just check it out. I think he's got a couple that opened at 15-1. to 1. Graham Motion on the turf. When in doubt, check him out. Tip number three, do not be afraid to spend more. When you're putting together maybe your pick threes or pick fours, right? Like your fun multi-race wager tickets where you're trying to you, – you, don't throw out too many horses, right? Don't throw out flight line if you're making a big pick five ticket. Like, of course, you're not going to just try to be – just pay a little extra. This is Breeders' Cup Day after all. I know uh, it's not – you know, if it gets a little chalky, uh, your $30 five-horse trifecta box, some of them might only pay $25. But you know what? It's worth it in case those long shots you sprinkle in there uh, come in and hit the board, right? Uh, this is the day – to, you know what? I like this horse's name. We're going to throw him in there. I'll do that with Obizos because I like Greg Foley. I'll do the same thing uh, with Congruent in the Juvenile, uh, the Tappet horse. Like, I, I like to bet Tappet horses. Like, this is the time where you get a little freaky, you throw in some long shots, and don't be afraid to spend a little extra money on those multi race uh, wagers. My final fourth tip, and this is my only real handicapping tip just pick the horses that are getting better each and every race. Um, some people, they aren't great at reading programs, but if you look at the two two boxes, speed figures and where they finished, you can notice if a horse is gradually improving, I'm trying to hit on those horses that are just getting better and better each time. I don't like when horses drop down in class and try to clean up, even though that works sometimes. I'm not the biggest fan. Um, as you'll see in a little bit, that's why I'm not a fan of one horse in the distaff. They're just not running their best right now. 
Um, so I, I, let's get into some of the races. Uh, Friday is Future Stars Friday. That's going to be the most difficult day to bet because it's all two-year-olds. Some of them have a couple races under their belt, um, as we'll see. But a lot of them are, are, are largely unproven. These are going to be the horses we're going to be following on the road to the Kentucky Derby uh, next year. And the overwhelming favorite, Bob Baffert's got him in Cave Rock. And yes, you heard that right. Bob Baffert, he's back. This is his first big-time event uh, since he had all of his controversy with whatever that cheating horse's name was. Uh, sorry, RIP Medina Spirit. But Bob Baffert, a uh, guy who likes to cheat, not going to be able to get away with cheating in this race, although he does have a couple of talented horses in here. Cave Rock is the fortified morning line favorite. It's ran a couple of hundreds and has two G1 wins, undefeated, uh, 3-0. and uh, You've got to take him in any of your bets. Um, but I've actually got a couple uh, in here, right? Like I, I'm not just going to bet the four to five favorite. He's going to be in my try box um, along with, uh, I, I mentioned that tap it. I might make it a big one. Blazing Sevens is a Chad Brown horse with a couple of G1 wins too. I know Chad Brown's mostly known as a turf guy. I like that one. Um, Forte has uh, is trained by Todd Pletcher, the four horse. He's got Irad on, Ortiz on board with back-to-back. Grade one wins, and I'm going to throw in the Brad Cox verifying. If you use those four horses, not the congruent one, that's just me being crazy. But four horse try box, that only costs you $12. You can win some nice coin there with the morning line favorite and a couple horses that are going to be in between six to 12 to one uh, from a price point. Uh, we move on to Saturday and race three. I mean, they're, they're getting things started with a bang, right? Uh, there's not a whole lot on the undercard even though like Ethereal Road was going to be in the Derby, that's in the opening race of the day. Races one and two are good as well. But race three, Philly Mare Sprint, really like Echo Zulu in this spot. This horse was undefeated as a two-year-old. She won the Juvenile Phillies last year in the Breeders' Cup. Uh, She started stretching out uh, to run these longer races to get in the uh, Oaks and didn't look like a super horse anymore. Steve Asmussen, uh, Ricardo Santana aboard, or I think it's Ricardo or Joel. Either way, good connections there. Uh, but after the Oaks loss, had a long layoff, returned to start running at seven furlongs, and won a grade three by five lengths. It's a solid uh, third choice. Uh, I'm probably going to sprinkle that one in there with a few other horses. CeCe's a pretty good horse uh, that's a four-year-old in this race. Uh, but I'm riding with Echo Zulu in race number three, the Philly and Mare Sprint. In the Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile, a Brad Cox horse, Cyberknife, he's he's won back-to-back stakes off the Derby. Um, it did not perform well in the Kentucky Derby, but came back, won back-to-back stakes races, then went toe-to-toe with Epicenter in the Traverse Stakes. It was quite a duel, had a great race, uh, and really was going to go be in the Classic, and I think have uh, great odds, but... They didn't want to mess with flight lines. So they're dropping down to the dirt mile. You're going to get pretty good odds too because um, there's some other horses that have already won at seven furlongs. So you're getting this at a shorter distance. I'm still going to take the price with Brad Cox, roll the dice with Cyberknife. Um, In race seven, the Breeders' Cup Sprint. This is the race. This is where you want to key Jackie's Warrior. Jackie's Warrior is probably the most dominant horse that will be racing in all two days. I know we love flight line and all the speed figures, but it doesn't have the kind of competition that Jackie's Warriors are going to go against. Jackie's Warriors should be able to handle this field easily. Key Jackie's Warrior with some other fun horses below. Single them in all your pick fives and pick sixes. Jackie Warrior, take that to the bank. You're not going to win anything betting straight up, but get exotic. Put that horse on top in your tries and your supers and, and, and try to have a little fun in the Breeders' Cup sprint with Jackie's Warrior winning that race. The distaff, this might be, this is the most fun race of the day because there's a lot of talent in this field where you've got two Oaks winners, including this year's winner, Secret Oath. Secret Oath with D-Lane is 15-1. to Horse hasn't performed uh, particularly well, reinforced in the Preakness, and then just has been hitting the board but not winning uh, in her last three grade one starts over the summer and going into the fall. But really, this race, it's its for me, it's between two Pletcher horses. Uh, and if the older Clary Air, Clary Air could play spoiler, but I really think it's down to Nest or Malathat, who won the Oaks a year ago. And ultimately, 
Uh, I think Malathat has the upper hand, one back to back against better competition. Uh, beat Watruska, which was just the baddest ass of all baddest ass horses, who's not healthy enough uh, to race in the Breeders' Cup distaff. Um, I, I, I like Malathat here. You could get in a I – mean, clear air could knock him off, but I like the form that Malathat's had, the wins against tougher competition as of late. And Malathat won its last her last race here in, at Keeneland in October. So give me Malathat in the Breeders' Cup distaff. In the Classic, this is Flightline's race to lose. If you look at the program, at the speed figures, it's hilarious because uh, a lot of times you're like, ooh, Got a hundred here. Oh, got a hundred there. Flightline only races in the hundreds and only in the one tens. It raced in one twenty six in that Pacific in one of the do- most dominant races ever. But this horse is three to five. I'm going to try to beat it. Right? Like it's no fun just betting with the favorite. And I'm going to try to beat it with the horse that I believe has been the creme de la creme, the cream of the crop in the three L class all year in Epicenter. Epicenter was the horse to beat. Only had one loss going into the Kentucky Derby and needed some wild stuff to happen for Rich Strike to come from behind and beat him at the wire. Got a bad trip in the Preakness, still almost won it, um, and then took some time off and dominated uh, in two horses at Saratoga against great fields in the Jim Dandy and in the Travers. I, I, Epicenter is the best three-year-old. It's He's been the best three-year-old all year long. And if anybody's going to beat Flightline, it's Epicenter. He's opening at 5-1 to one morning line. Would love for that price to hang around there. Um, I'm still in my multi-races. I'm going to have Flightline in there. But I'm, I'm going to try to beat Flightline. Because you know what? It's so fun betting a 3-5 to five favorite, which Flightline's going to go off at like a 1-9. to nine. It's going to be – you're going to make no money on it. So let's try to beat Flightline, the super horse out of tap it. It's probably unlikely. And even if not, then Flightline win by 100 links. Like, I, I don't care. Uh, sh- show me something historical and impressive or give me Epicenter. Either way, we hope you can, uh, you have fun all weekend long betting the Breeders' Cup uh, out at Keeneland. The Cats are going to get their win at Missouri. Get it over with early so you can have a lot of fun betting with Naira Bets. Use promo code KSR25 uh, to get that $25 free bet and a $200 deposit match when you play for the first time at Naira Bets. I'm Nick Roush. So long and good luck from KSR.